Okay, let's talk about adding fractions. And of course, when you see a problem and it's like adding or subtracting fractions, typically most students are like, wow, this is going to be so much fun because I get to find the LCD. Well, in actuality, most students do not like fraction problems. They kind of look like this. They're like, I don't want to do that problem. You know, they don't mind doing easy problems like this, maybe one third plus two fifths, because finding the LCD here, if you do have to find the LCD, is not that difficult, okay? Matter of fact, what is the LCD uh, one third plus two fifths? Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to tell you the answer right now. The LCD is 15. Okay, now if I asked you why the LCD is 15, of course that is the correct answer, that's where students might start scratching their head. They'd be like, well, I'm not quite sure why it is, but I do know for this particular problem, the LCD is 15. But what about this problem? Okay, well, these look at these denominators. These are pretty big. So definitely this is not going to be an enjoyable problem for a lot of math students. Well, let's talk about a nice, easy way to do this problem without even thinking about the LCD. Now, the LCD stands for what? The lowest common denominator. It's a um, very, very important topic and skill that you absolutely must know uh, when you're dealing with fractions. So this particular little video that I'm doing here is not going to be, I'm not making the case where like, hey, you don't need to learn the LCD. You do need to learn uh, what the LCD is and how to find the LCD. But if you're faced with figuring out a problem like this, there's a nice, easy technique that you can do to add and subtract any fractions, okay? Without even thinking about the LCD, it's just taking three steps and then you'll be almost done, okay? So uh, three or four steps that anyone can do. So if you think you could do this problem in your own easy way, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct result. Now, mind you, the correct result is a fully simplified, a fully reduced fraction. Okay, so if you gave me the fraction 30 over 60 as your final answer, I very well might take uh, points off because that is equal to the fraction one half. So anytime you're dealing with fractions, make sure you fully simplify. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the correct answer in a second, then I'm gonna show you this awesome technique to add and subtract fractions when our brain doesn't feel like dealing with the LCD. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It really is my true calling to help students learn mathematics. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you could be successful math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in mathematics, okay? It doesn't make a difference if uh, math is just, you know, like your worst, you know, uh, subject. You just hate math, but you have to just pass a particular math course. Listen, if you have to learn math, and hopefully you want to learn math, it's a very important skill, then you want to be successful in it, okay? And here's the three things you need to be successful in math. One, you got to be uh, willing to work hard. There are no, sh uh, there is no shortcuts. Now I'm going to show you an easy way here to add these fractions, but you still need to understand the LCD, right? So when it comes to math, you have to be willing to put in the work. The second thing you need is encouragement. This is really important for those of you that have a tough time with math. Do not give up. You can do this stuff. But the third most important thing you need is great uh, math instruction. Okay, now math is a very technical subject, and I can kind of, you know, uh, really talk about these fractions as okay, we have two fractions. This is the numerator. This is the denominator. We're going to find the lowest common. You know, it's I can make this very very technical, but that's not a good way to teach math, right? The way I like to teach math is explain things so everyone can understand without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for uh, that involves math, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my, uh, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. If you truly wanna be great at math, you have to take great math notes. So if you're you know, kind of sloppy right now with your notes, or maybe you're not taking any notes, start improving your notes and things will get better for you immediately. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we got uh, 3 over 52 plus 1 over 56. What is the answer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. There you go, 55 over 728. That is the answer hopefully you got. Now, if you said, well, for me, it's easier just to find the LCD. So, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, maybe you're going to show me an easy way, but I am an expert at finding LCD. Hey, that's that's uh, perfectly okay. Okay, matter of fact, I would just give you a nice thumbs up for that. Listen, great job. Okay, so if you like working with uh, the lowest common denominator and you know you know uh, how to find it very quickly and you're accurate, then stick with tech, uh, that particular technique, okay? But if you didn't get this right or if you struggle with this problem, even if you were trying to use the LCD, well, there is hope. Just hold on one second, I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. But uh, anyways, for those of you that did get this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your success and adding fractions. Again, you know, when we're talking about easy fractions, like one half plus three over sevens, you know, these are kind of not too bad in terms of the uh, denominators, but when we have, you know, denominators like this, 52 and 56, well, it's a different ball game. Okay, now, before we continue on, just a couple basic things about adding and subtracting fractions. So you can add and subtract fractions when those fractions have the same denominator. So in this case here, these two fractions do not have the same denominator. So we're gonna to have to change these denominators such that they are the same, and that is the lowest common denominator, okay? Again, if I had a problem like two-fifths plus one-fifth, okay, these denominators are the same, so I could just simply add the numerators. The answer would be three-fifths. But in this particular problem, the uh, denominator is not the same, so again, you're gonna have to deal with the lowest common denominator. Now, if you are already kinda lost, let me give you a couple quick suggestions if you really need to review and learn fractions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel about fractions, all things fractions, but uh, I'm gonna suggest you check out two courses in my Math Help program. One, pre-algebra if you happen to be at that level, or my Math Foundations mini course. It's a three chapter course. I go through all basic level uh, mathematics, stuff like, like in elementary school fractions, percent, uh, place value, decimals, all that kind of good stuff. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue on. And here is our problem. So if I asked you what is the lowest common denominator, this is what hopefully you would have told me, all right? It is 728. So 728, well, uh, how did you get this? Well, 728, to figure this out, okay, uh, oftentimes when I asked you, you know, what is the LCD, okay, with easy numbers, you could probably give me the answer, but the larger numbers, it's a different deal, okay? So you need to know precisely how to figure out what the LCD is. So let's just look at that real fast, okay? Here are these two numbers. Let's just um, look at how I got 728. But I'm not going to do this problem using LCD, but I am going to show you how, uh, why, you know, it's good to have another way to do these problems without using LCD because finding the lowest common denominator is a little bit of work in and of itself. Okay, so here um, are uh, the numbers in our denominators, right? We have 52 and 56. So in order to find the LCD, what you want to do is take those respective denominators. In this case, we have two, and you want to prime factor them. Okay, so in other words, you want to break this up into its prime factor. So 52, we can write as 2 times 26. And notice I'm circling the prime numbers, the prime factors. 26, I can continue to factor as 2 times 13. So uh, so 26 is um, 2 is a prime factor. 13 is a prime factor. So 52, I can write as 2 times 2 times 13. And 2 times 2, of course, is 2 squared or 4. But I'm going to write... Um, uh, my prime factors in terms of powers if I have any. So 52 is the same thing as 2 squared times 13. That is the prime factor factors of uh, 52. So let's do the same thing with 56. 56 is the same thing as 4 times 14. There's different ways you can um, find the prime factors of a number, but this is one particular route. So 4 times 14 is 56. Uh, 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. Those are prime factors. And 14 is the same thing as 2 times 7. So I have all the prime factors of 56, so 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the third power, times 7. These are the prime factors of 56. Okay, so I have to do all that work. And the LCD, 
the lowest common denominator, okay, what I need to do is I need to have each of these prime factors represented. So let's just look here. I need a 13 in my LCD. I'm going to need a 7, each of these unique prime factors. So there's my 13, there's my 7. And notice I have 2 squared and I have 2 to the third. So I need, do I need to have both a 2 squared and 2 to the third in my LCD? No, it's just the highest power of that number. Okay, so I have 2, all right? I'm not going to take 2 uh, squared. I'm going to take 2 to the third. It's the highest power of 2. So uh, now I have 2 uh, cubed times 13 times uh, 7. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. 8 times 13 times 7 is 728. So this is a quick little review of how to find the LCD. Now, you know, this was a fairly decent amount of work. And if you uh, really, you know, don't know precisely how to prime factor and how to build the LCD with the products of these uh, uh, prime factors, well, you know, uh, you're going to be a little, you know, you're, of course, you're not going to be able to do this problem. But this is 728. Now, we're going to have to adjust these respective fractions. Let's go back up to the problem. Okay, we're going to have to rewrite this uh, denominator and this denominator with, uh, um, the, we have to convert these denominators into 728, and then we're going to have to um, adjust the numerators. So you need to know how to do that, okay? You definitely need to know how to do that, and you learn this by, you know, working with more basic, easier problems, okay? So again, I'm not trying to say, hey, you don't need to know this stuff. Yes, you do, and this is particularly important, this little procedure I'm talking about here in algebra. But let's talk about an awesome way now to find out the answer to this problem. Okay, so I like to call this technique the bow tie technique. So if you're thinking about like a bow tie, right, if I was to wear a bow tie, now some of you are probably saying, this guy, he's a math guy, I bet he wears a bow tie and he's got a pocket protector and a bunch of pencils and calculators. No, you would, I would be, I'd probably look like a regular person walking down the street, you know. But anyway, it's nothing against bow ties. I think they're pretty cool. But this is a bow tie. I want you to keep this shape in mind because you're going to follow a particular pattern here. And here it is, all right? It kind of reminds me of a bow tie. All right, so it's very, very specific. And let me go ahead and explain to you right now. Okay, so you're going to start with this bottom uh, right number. Okay, this denominator to the right, right here, and you're going to multiply to that number. Okay, so notice this yellow arrow, so it's going to be 56 times 3. So it's going to be this times this, and let's go ahead and skew it up so we can see the whole thing. So you're going to follow this pattern. Okay, again, you're going to start from the bottom right, you're going to multiply across this way. So 56 times this numerator right here, 56 times 3 is 168. All right, step one. Step two, is you're going to switch, you're going to come over to this denominator, and you're going to go multiply across this way. We're following the blue arrow, so 52 times uh, 1 is 52, okay? Now, notice this is an addition problem, so I'm going to put an addition operator right there, and then I'm going to put a little fraction bar. This is the numerator. If this is a, a subtraction problem, I would put a subtraction operator right there, okay? So let's just make sure we understand what we've done so far. So we're just using this bow tie, uh, bow tie technique. We always start here. So step one, there's the answer to step one. Then step two is this times this, boom, okay? So hopefully you see what's going on. And yes, it's just basic multiplication, but you could just do this without thinking. Like, okay, this times this is that. This times this is that. And I'm going to add these together. That's my numerator. And then we're going to multiply the respective denominators, 52 times 56. And uh, yeah, this might be a little bit of work, but not you know, nearly not as uh, much as all this prime factorization we'd had to do, but 52 times 56, we get 2912. So I'm going to add up the numerator, 168 plus 52, these uh, values here, and I get 220 over 2912. There you go. This is correct. Okay. Now here's the deal with the bow tie method. You are done. Well, not quite done. Okay. Let me uh, take this back. This answer right here is um, its value is the sum. We actually found the correct value to adding up these fractions. So the only downside with the bow tie method is oftentimes you need to reduce or simplify your answer, okay? So that's the only downside. Sometimes you have a, a fraction that's fully reduced. Sometimes you can reduce that answer down. So you need to kind of attempt to, you know, simplify your fraction. But in terms of whether this is correct or not, this is absolutely the correct value. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just focus on 
reducing 220 over 2912. And that's pretty easy. What we can do is just start thinking to ourselves, all right, 220, and this one, um, this number here ends in two, and I got a zero here. Let's just start dividing by two. So I could take 220 and divide it by two, I get 110. And then I take 2912, divide that by two, you get 1456. Now you're saying to yourself, okay, uh, let me see if I can divide this by two again. All right, uh, and now if you know the divisibility rules, like if a number is divisible by three, or if a number is divisible by uh, five or you know two, okay, this is gonna be really helpful as well. So you should, these are basic skills that you need to know in terms of fractions. But I can take this 110 and say, okay, I'm gonna divide by two again, and I have five, uh, 50, that gives me 55, and then divide this by two, and I get 728. Look at that, there's our LCD. And now 55 is what? That's just five times 11. Those are prime numbers. You might hopefully saw that. And now the, is uh, 728 divisible by five or 11? No. Okay. And of course you can test that. But what I have found through my decades of teaching mathematics is that students are far more comfortable doing this kind of work. You know, maybe simplifying or reducing a fraction because this is correct. Okay. All right. It's not fully simplified. And if you turn this in to your teacher, uh, your teacher might give you like seven out of 10 points because they want you to fully simplify your answer. Uh, if you simplify you know, your fraction down to here, maybe they might give you a few more points on a, you know, in terms of partial credit. You need to fully simplify your fractions okay, down to their final results. But that's a lot easier um, than going through prime factorization and you know, determine the LCD and adjusting things. Because right off the bat, when you do this method, you have the right answer. You're like, you know, you have assurances. Oh, this is correct. Now I just have to focus on reducing my answer. Okay. So again, it's been my experience that, uh, you know, students will tend to uh, be able to handle, you know, addition and subtraction problems with fractions that have very large denominators. This is a good technique. But again, it's, you know, uh, you know, not to be redundant, but I'm going to be redundant one more time. This doesn't exonerate you uh, you know, in terms of you being responsible to understand how to find the lowest common denominator and add and subtract fractions, et cetera. The, all of this is important, okay? But you do want to know this little bow tie technique as it comes in super handy. And again, we're able to add these fractions without the LCD. So sometimes your brain just is like, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. I'm just going to go this times this, this times that, this times that. And then I'll just kind of just start whittling this fraction down till it's in its fully simplified form. Okay, so again, if you need help with fractions, I got a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel and those two courses, my Math Foundation course and my Pre-Algebra course can really help you out. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.